So uh, this morning I did as a warm-up exercise, I sometimes do before I, I actually begin my uh, whatever work I apply a lot for myself for the day, and it was uh, working with the, the pie pyramid. Uh, I've done a little work before on trying to get a neat pie pyramid out of the grade pyramid and, um, you know, the way that a phi pyramid is because, you know, the, the, the grade pyramid is in the proportion of if you take one side to be phi, the, the, the golden number, then uh, the height would be the square root of phi and the half base would be one. So, uh, you know, a perfect phi uh, pyramid, and of course, the Great Pyramid doesn't exactly perfectly follow that. It shows it could have been in, in the mind of the designers of the pyramid, but you can't say for sure. But pretty much, the Great Pyramid is a phi pyramid. You know, you've got the, the side of the apothem being phi, the height being the square root of phi, and the half base being one. So I've done a little work with the trying to get something neat like that with the, with a pi pyramid, because we know that the height of the Great Pyramid, 280 royal cubits, if made the radius of a circle, that that circle will have uh, the same, the length of the circumference of that circle will be the same as the base of the Great Pyramid, 440 royal cubits times 4. So the Great Pyramid squares the circle by, by uh, circumference, and so we know the Great Pyramid is a, uh, a pi pyramid, but can you get a neat pyramid like the phi pyramid? Phi, the square root of phi, one. And so uh, what I came up with is that if you say that the height is pi, let's make the height be pi, then uh, the apothem is four and the full base is five, just about. So I have discovered a, a uh, you know, a, a pi pyramid that's neat. So you, so it's just so neat that the Great Pyramid combines both of these. It seems like it's related to its 51.84 uh, uh, degree angle. Without that particular uh, slope angle, the second, as the Egyptians called it, a, a rise, uh, it's five and a half by seven. Uh, without that, this wouldn't happen. And uh, sacred geometry decoded has been one who said that the four different lengths of the sides, because basically the Great Pyramid's not a square, because each one of the sides is a different length. And some people say, well, it's such a big structure, of course they're going to be a little off. But others say, no, those are intentional. And one of the intentions in having four different sides, slightly different sides, for the base of the Great Pyramid is that it would allow the Great Pyramid to be both a phi and a pi pyramid, because people debate sometimes as to whether it's which it's more closely. And I've seen verdicts come on both sides. Well, it's more closely a pi pyramid. It's more closely a phi pyramid. But I was simply trying to get a neat formula like the phi one. Phi, square root of phi, one. And I did. I did. But the work I did this morning, I fine-tuned it. And really, the closest it comes to, if you say the height is uh, pi, and then the apothem is uh, 4, and the full base is 5, that works closest when you use the actual dimensions of the Great Pyramid now. Not as all the others always use, what the intended one, if you take the full casing stones, the, the Great Pyramid, and the beauty of the shining diamond that it was when it was created, the, the original intent, instead of taking that, take what's there now. So the height isn't 280 royal cubits, it's like 261.7 royal cubits to the existing top, not the perfect top, because you know what? There's no evidence that top was ever there. And so I got to thinking, well, I like the idea now working with a pie pyramid for what's actually there, because that might really be what the builders intended. Of course, the, the casing stones were there, the highly polished Tura limestone casing stones were there. But, uh, and normally I don't just talk like this. I like to be visual. If you follow my channel, I would have said all this in visual. Okay, so let me be visual here. I'm going to show you the pie pyramid that I uncovered and that really is uh, making me quite happy. And I'll talk a bit about what I think its meaning is. Okay, so I've talked about the phi pyramid that we know exists. Geometricians talk about how the Great Pyramid is proportionally a phi pyramid. Okay, so this I'm showing you the top there. You've got uh, the hypotenuse of phi, the height of the square root of phi, and the half base of one. Okay. So let's put that off to the side, that beautiful phi pyramid. Okay, now since it's proportional, it is ratio-based, it can be smaller, it can be full size. So there's the, the triangle, and so the half base would be 1. And this bigger triangle, the hypotenuse would be phi, and the height would be the square root of phi. So again, pr proportionally, it can be big or small. 
Okay, so now the pi pyramid that I want to make. I wanted to see what would happen if I attempted to make an equally simple and lovely pyramid from pi, also proportional and ratio based. Okay, so the current height of the Great Pyramid is 261.7 royal cubits. Okay, so I was going to use that for the height, and I'll call that pi. So I'll start out by having a clean Greek constant here instead of phi. I'm using pi because that's what I'm looking to do to see if there is a, a, a clean pi pyramid here. All right, so the original base of the Great Pyramid is 440 royal cubits, but since I'm working with what's actually there, and I'm doing this because the results led me to the, you'll see the results, that's why I'm using uh, the what's there now instead of the original, because it comes out much better with what's there instead of the original. So the current length is not 440 royal cubits, it's 419 royal cubits. Okay, so if you use the same ratio as calling pi 261.7, which is the height, then this, this, uh, the base is 5.0. Now I'm just showing, you know, two de just one decimal because, you know, numbers appear after that zero, but at least for the first uh, decimal place, it is 5.0. So the base is five. So we've got a height of pi and a base of five based on what's actually there now. Okay, so let's look at the apothem if we're going to call that four. The original apothem from the uh, end of the casing stones up to the point at the top was 356 royal cubits, but the current is about 334 royal cubits. Okay, so if we do that same proportionality, it comes out to 4.00. We have two decimal places that it's a zero. So wow, there's a pi four five pyramid here. I found what I was searching for. I mean, I'm I'm excited. This is totally cool. Okay. So there's the the phi pyramid, the clean. You know, the the uh, the, the hypotenuse is phi. The height is the square root of phi. Half base is one. All right. So here's the pi pyramid. It's like wow. It's like it's like the three four five. You know, famous Pythagorean. But it's not a three four five. Pi is sort of like three. But it's, it's the height is pi, the apothem is 4, and the base is 5. When you use the, the existing pyramid, what's there now, not some idealized original version. Because again, it's, we're not even sure that the pyramid, pyramidian was ever on top. So we're just guessing when we say what the original heights were, the 280 royal cubits and all that kind of thing. Okay? So please note... While the, the Phi Pyramid is based on the idealized original Great Pyramid that we assume had the pyramid, but we can't prove it. So most measurements you see about the Great Pyramid always go to this idealized pyramid that's not there now. But the Pi Pyramid is based on what actually is there now. This Pi 4, 5, you know, pyramid that I found here, this triangle, is based on what's actually there now. Okay, so... Here's kind of what that means to me. I want to just put a, put a meaning on that. So here's something from the psalmist. The heavens are telling a story, praising the Creator. Day to day pours out speech. Night to night reveals knowledge. There is no place where their voice is not heard. Their line has gone out through all the earth and their utterances to the end of the world. So, so the psalmist calls these things that the heaven is teaching, you know, about the wonderful things that are in the skies. That's called a line. Okay, so keep that in mind. So the meaning of pi and a line. All right, so start with a point. You know, that's, that's, that's the undefined, one of the undefined elements of geometry. It's undefined because think about it. A point has no space. It has nothing, but we represent it with like a period, but that really doesn't exist. So the psalmist is making a point, but we use the word point when you're, make, you know, when you're making a point. Okay, so there's a symbolic representation of a point. In geometry, it's, an, it's one of the elements that's undefined. It's a point. We understand the concept, but it's undefined. The psalmist makes a point. Okay, then we draw a line. Well, the point of the psalmist talking about the wonders of the heavens, he calls that a line. The message that's being sent from the heavens, we look at nature, we, we marvel. That's called a line. It's like a teaching, but it's called a line by the psalmist. Okay, so we draw this line. So we've got a point and a line. The two beginning elements of geometry, both undefined. Okay, then we apply pi. Okay, so applying pi would mean add something from the alpha and the omega, the creator, because pi is infinite. You know, all birthdays are in it, all numbers. In a sense, all numeric reality is in pi because it goes on forever and it's never been known by anybody. It's a good symbol of the creator. So we add pi to this line we've drawn, okay? So this mystical, marvelous, wonderful, practical thing we can use, but it's also much greater than us. It's infinite, pi, okay? So a circle appears. When you have a line and pi, a radius and the value pi, that's a circle. It defines a circle. And so that beautiful thing 
as an age-old symbol of eternity. So the power of meditative geometry, you've heard Robert Grant talk about it, meditating on nature. These things are meant to be transformative. And the message I'm getting, they're meant to be transformative from for us as we exist now. Yes, we should have beautiful casing stones. We should be polished. We should have higher chakras. We should have more consciousness. We should have deeper resonance. But we don't. We're where we are. We sometimes yell at people. We get, we get mean. We, we get hubris. We think we're better than somebody else. So the transformation that can take place in us through looking at nature, through meditative geometry, through, through what the psalm, psalmist talked about, happens with us as we are now. And so apply pie to where you are today. Have a great day.